Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, hi, Jerza, welcome and welcome everyone who is uh, watching this talk. Um, this is a talk in the series of Bispectacle, uh, European collaboration project. Um, and my name is uh, Sara Melin. I work in Gothenburg in Sweden uh, with an uh, international performing arts festival called the Gothenburg Dance and Theatre Festival, which is also run by and situated in a theatre venue in the middle of Gothenburg. Uh, which is called Stora Teatern. And I would like to introduce Jersa Rosnik Novak, uh, who is a dancer, uh, a, a dance artist, a choreographer, and um, who I had the honor to meet when you were with us in Gothenburg um, more than a year ago in January 2020, 2020. Um, where you did a residency with us, with the work together all alone. And we will speak about you, your artistic background and uh, the work that we were a part of collaborating with and, and where you are right now in your um, artistry and in, um, in your practice in the, in the time we live in at the moment. Warmly welcome, Jadza. And yes, please. Uh, thank you, thank you very much for introducing me and hello everyone um, who's watching this. Um, yes, so as said, uh, my name is Jerza Ružnik Novak. I'm coming from Slovenia and at the moment I'm also based in Slovenia. Um, and yes, I had the honor to be a part of Gothenburg's residency in the frame of Bespectative and that was wonderful to create together all alone. Um, very happy about that yeah at the moment in slovenia as i guess everywhere around the world we are in a part lockdown which is not as nice as it could be if we would be all open and i guess that was would allow us to be even more creative um yeah what should i say that's it actually at the moment actually i'm teaching at a high school for contemporary dance in slovenia this was quite of a change and I think Sarah you were actually a part of this decision if you remember I had to decide in Gothenburg I was like should I or should I not and yeah here I am yes right. lovely yeah I would like to talk a little bit about your background as an artist and uh, I know that you're educated both within contemporary dance so you did a um, you studied in Linz um, contemporary dance and ped pedagogy um, and at the same time in the last part of your your degree you also studied in Ljubljana if I'm right uh, social works so um, I think that's a really interesting um, uh, that's something that we spoke about very much when we met here in Gothenburg and I also think that it's very interesting to hear you elaborate on that background because I think your 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 practice and your theories within social works really feed into the way you work as an artist especially in in Together All Alone uh, so I would be really interesting to hear you talk a little bit more about where you come from the backgrounds that you now put into to your artistic work um, yeah, so yes, I said I studied uh, in uh, at Bruckner Uni in Linz and I did bachelor's there and then also master's and in between I studied social work in Slovenia, which was a very fun ride like going back and forward for the, the studies and then actually I finished the master's in pedagogy connecting social work and dance. And this is actually how Together All Alone was created and how the concept for Together All Alone, the piece that we did in this frame, was created. Um, because, yeah, I took some basic principles of social work, trying to then mix it with dance and how to actually involve people on stage and how to co-create a performance. Sort of like this, so I'm... I'm very happy I could kind of link those two fields together and actually put it in a performative work that stands on stage. And it's, 
I think quite inspiring to just co-create in the moment of performance actually happening. I really enjoy that part when I have people actually on stage. So yeah, um, I'm very interested in like human communication and in relation and also how to how to actually broaden the audience through giving them the experience of collaborating and co-performing on stage. Mm. So I think like, a, yeah, this could also be, a, it's a good way, I think, to involve the audience and broaden the spectrum of audience for the dance performances or contemporary dance performances. Definitely, yes. Maybe we should give, uh give the others an idea of the work that we speak about. Um, so the piece Together All Alone was actually created um, and transformed into a solo by coincidence um, because it was you and your your dance colleague, your your partner in the in the company that you run or in a collaboration. Um, yeah. Veronica, I don't know if I pronounced the surname right, Tukkerli? Yes. When we created it, she was still Chimborova and now she got married, so she's Tukkerli. Okay, okay. <laughs> so Veronica is actually a really important figure in this piece, yet she's not there herself physically because she was injured as you um, worked on the duet that you, that you were doing together. Um, and uh, instead of cancelling and stopping the rehearsals, you decided to work on a solo where we meet you on stage and where you speak about the presence and the absence of Veronica um, on stage and also in your artistic um, process. Yeah. And um, it becomes a really interesting um, dialogue between you and us as an audience. Um, one could call it a monologue because it is you speaking more or less throughout the work, at least as far as I saw the piece, because um, we have to remember that I haven't seen the, the premiere, unfortunately, due to, to the corona. Um, but um, there are really um, strong themes in the piece that deals with um, feeling alone, um, emptiness, um, nostalgia. Um, Very much so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, some there is some disappointment in there as well. There's like a lot of really, um, I think, personal and human uh, feelings that come comes into what you speak about and then you turn your your whole um body and your yourself to us as an audience and you invite um, us as an audience to come and take part uh, on stage and that's a really um tender part of the performance i i feel where you invite people to step over you know that that border that line from being a spectator into being a performer on stage together with you yeah, uh, yeah do you want to talk more about the work and 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 feed into what i've said because as i say i've seen um maybe four or five work in progress versions where you worked with this in workshops with Swedish participants, uh, people who are non-dancers who came to workshops and who worked together with you and us in Stora Teatern for sessions of three hours. So I think you managed to meet quite a few people and participants um, from here. Yeah, this was really great. And I think the, the whole process of creating Together All Alone was then throughout these residencies to actually have workshops with dancers and non-dancers, professionals or non-professionals, different ages of people of different ages to really see all the reactions 
on this offered participation, of course. And I think uh, this is what makes Together All Alone really rich because I could already create it with with the audience, you know, like the people that watched and th that came to collaborate in the um, workshops. So I'm very thankful and very grateful for this process because it gave me so many different people and views on the work that I think this is what made it really rich. But yeah, what, what you said is that actually for the, the performance that we were supposed to have in Slovenia, Veronica got injured and then we really couldn't cancel and we decided to, okay, let's just try and see if the audience can become Veronica throughout the whole piece. And um, the first work in progress worked quite well. And then we, we thought to dive in with the choreographer, also Johannes Randolph, we, we tried to work together. And it's something about this piece that it just keep on chasing me that it's that is that I'm always left alone, you know, in Gothenburg, the choreographer got injured and couldn't come. So I had to do the residency alone. And then, of course, Veronica is injured uh, throughout. And now Corona took Veronica away again, plus the audience physically in the space um, away. So it's, um, yeah, it's something about this piece that I'm always left alone, which kind of makes this feeling of being left alone and really needing help to kind of perform this piece the way it was as a duet with Veronica very vivid because I'm always left alone somehow um, but yeah throughout the piece the audience is asked to become Veronica and to replace her and my research then was actually how the absence becomes a presence and actually um, is it really easier for the audience to feel free and comfortable on stage when they are asked to be another person. So it's like a, a mask where they can hide and be like, okay, I'm Veronica, I'm actually free to do everything. And, and without them, the, the performance wouldn't exist because I really need them to finish the piece because I want to perform it in the way it was together with Veronica somehow. So I guess if there would ever happen a moment when the audience wouldn't want to join, I guess we would stop the performance because they are for me essential and I, I need them to perform, of course. And I need them to co-create the performance with me. So I think like the performance right now uh, as the end product that it's keep on changing actually is it's in a sort of shape of a frame that kind of gives the, yeah, a, a, a frame and then it's keep on changing with the different people that co-create it with me in, in the actual moment. So I really like this about it because you never know how the people will react and it's always a bit different, but the frame stays the same. So we kind of have the beginning and the end in all, and all the scenes that were in the actual duet that then we try and do together with an audience. Yes. I think I kind of said it all. Uh, am I correct that you were able to go to one other residency place within the Bespectative um, partnership? Yes, I was very lucky to actually have two more. So it was Gothenburg and then I was in Budapest with the Bakelit Art Center. And then I was in Dublin with the Dublin Theatre Festival. Right which was amazing because I got to meet so many different people and artists and also, you know, outside of the studio, kind of connect with the local scene mm. uh, in all the countries. So, yeah, this was right before the lockdown. We came back to Slovenia to perform right before the lockdown. So, so you had a piece with where you had been able to set the lighting and the sound and the dra dramaturgy and the whole piece was more or less ready or it was ready you you did you did manage to to have a premiere right tell us about that yeah we we managed to from the original piece without masks and restriction and corona, <laughs> we managed to have a general rehearsal. And then the premiere was planned for the 13th of March. And this was a moment of a lockdown for Slovenia. So we could not do it. And then in between the two lockdowns, we had the time frame where performing was possible. So we 
reconstructed the piece again into a together all alone version Coronica, um, which yeah is the same piece basically has the same dramaturgy has the same music lights just that some scenes had to be a bit adjusted to the current rules and corona situation so all the veronicas had the same masks and we were of course not allowed to touch and i was allowed to invite on stage less people to, to keep the safe distance and the audience got their own like uh, disinfection and <laughs> yeah so that's so we premiered it in a, in a coronica version and right now we are actually creating an online version which yeah it's now kind of adopting and accepting the new reality that we are living in at the moment and um it's again a new research for me to really see what participation means online and how can the audience feel engaged and how can we co-create a performance when we are not in one space and in one moment together but each of us in our own homes and mm. online i think it's a very different also concentration and perception of time and space and the concept right yeah so just so i understand the coronica version will be an online live version where we as audience and and possible participants um take part in in the actual live piece happening live so it's not a it's not a video it's not a pre-recorded um performance no so i would say like th this this one online it, it i would say it's the third version the first one is the original then it's the coronica and now it's the mm -hmm. online <laughs> it's kind of keep on changing and for johannes the choreographer he was also saying that it's quite a lot already to keep on like changing it and ad adjusting it to the current situation of course um it's not a stream it, it, like it's not a, a set video but the performance will happen in the moment and people will be asked to participate uh, in the moment itself so it's not a pre-recorded video or anything like this because because still i want them to decide i want them to have a word in the performance which then of course it has to happen live so people can participate and kind of direct it in their own way i think this is such an interesting and great um example of both um how we all, but especially artists, need to be um, flexible and are challenged to be persistent in like keep keeping on the work. Um, and I've heard other examples just like this one, where rather than letting go of an artistic idea and a piece of work, just you know changing it and letting it actually react and. Um, and bounce back from from the this really really challenging time that we live in and especially when it comes to being an independent artist uh, um so do you find like where is where do you find the drive to do that with this specific piece you know because i think it's so great to um to have together all alone um to to talk um, um yeah to as an example mm, for me I, I i have to admit i was struggling at first because i i'm really a, a bit like the, the experience is for sure not the same you know and then for me i i was like but i need people and i need them in space and what is the participation and what does it mean but at the same time i also think um going online it's a, a new tool or a, a, a new way of communicating that i think it's worth um researching and i think in some ways it can again attract new audiences and you know you can see it from home like you don't even need to <laughs> travel anywhere and i think it's a great challenge also to just use what is there from the side of technology and bring it into the online version of the pieces that mm. of course will not be the same as 
when they are live because it's a completely different event and a completely different experience but i think it's worth trying and i still am of the opinion that not everything should now go online because i have a, a, the feeling that like first in the first lockdown everything went online and it was like the new way to share and i think it's really important to see how the work has to be adjusted because it's not enough to just put it online you know especially i think not in a participatory performance where the audience plays a really important role so mm. it's not just to put it online and they can see it but to really find ways how to collaborate on such a distance but actually so close so i think yeah it's just a a, a new challenge and a new tool and a new way of communication that I think it's worth mm. experiencing and, and researching a bit more. Mm. And could you tell us when this will happen? When will the premiere of the digital version um, open and how can we take part of it? Um, the exact dates are still not clear because the situation is keep on changing. So we don't know if even I will be able to be in the theater, but somehow it's it's um, it's planned for the end of March and for sure be spectative. I mean, Patella will for sure inform um, be spectative partners and you will be for sure able to collaborate and get the link and click on it and appear in together all alone. I think Perfect. Be awesome. Yes, I'm you really looking forward to to seeing this version of the piece and I'm longing to see you again and I'm also sure that a lot of the participants in Gothenburg will be um, excited to see the digital version of the piece that they took part in uh, creating. True, true. Mm. This, I, I think, so this is exactly wonderful because we will be able to meet, somehow meet, although we are in two different countries. So. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Jerza. It was lovely to see you like this and I, I, I hope we meet soon. Um, and thank you everyone for, for watching and taking part of this conversation. Thank you.